What if there was a new upcoming gacha game that has plenty of cute characters, but there's also a Mr. Apple with a tie that you can use in your team, a UFO who has abducted a little cow and uses it to attack the enemies, or how about a girl that's made out of TVs? Well, what you're looking at is Reverse 1999, a 20th century time travel strategy RPG, and in today's video, I want to talk about it because I cannot remember the last time I was so hyped about a game like this one. I'll tell you about the game's story, gameplay, and characters because I was lucky enough to be selected for the closed beta test, and the developers wanted to support my channel, which I'm grateful for, and you can look forward to the global release by using my link in the description to stay up to date with the game and follow Reverse 1999 on its official channels. Now, what the heck is happening in Reverse 1999 that we have so many quirky characters? Well, the game takes place in a reality where humans and arcanists exist, but here's a twist. From the last day of 1999, the time has shifted and now it's flowing backwards caused by something called the storm. So we followed the main character Verton, who is a timekeeper arcanist, and she's the only one who's immune to the storm, and so she begins to try and figure out what's causing it this time anomaly. What's really cool about this game is that you get to visit a lot of different periods and locations of the 20th century, and you get to meet various arcanists living there. You'll find characters from the Roaring Twenties, where the good old prohibition is back once again in America, or the Swinging Sixties in Britain, where being groovy is the only thing that makes you look cool there. But the biggest standout for me has to be the voice actors. This game doesn't mess around with your regular anime English voices, and instead we get characters like Regulus, who has a British accent. Hmm, it's a bit too quiet, I'd say. How about some rockabilly music? Or a knight who has a French accent and even greets you in French. Bonjour. Comment allez-vous? And yeah, this guy is literally just two hands with a sword. I'm telling you, this game has some wacky character designs and they're super fun to play around with. Speaking of which, Reverse 1999 gameplay feels really good. Basically, you merge and activate character cards in battle, usually you get 3 moves, and each card has up to 3 levels, so if I press this level 1 card, it will be added to the queue, and then I can make 2 more moves by either activating or merging them. Now because normally you use 3 characters at a time, their cards will show up randomly, and you plan around this by merging cards and saving them up for later turns. But there's also a tuning system, so it's like leader skills if you played similar games, and the one I have here is First Melody, which allows me to create a generic level 1 card that I can merge into any other level 1 card, and the other ability allows me to mulligan the cards I have right now. This gives more control over randomness when battling, and it's really fun to play around it. What's also cool is that you can see the enemy intentions above their head, so if you see one enemy is about to unleash all of the cards they have, you can try and defeat it or disable it, and then the enemy turn is prevented entirely. But going back to the card system, each character has two basic cards and one ultimate. You can only cast this ultimate when the character obtains enough moxie, which you can see here. And and how do you obtain it? Well, there are various ways, but the main two ones is by just simply using the cards. So if you use this character's level 2 card, they will gain Moxie, get 5 on it, and their ultimate card will show up next turn. You also gain Moxie by just merging the character cards. So basically, playing around this Moxie mechanic is super important because not only are ultimates game changing, but they also look super cool as you can see here. I'm actually surprised to see so much creativity put into ultimates. A lot of them have really unique animation, and I honestly haven't seen it done in other gacha games. Now, as I said before, there's a ton of quirky and unique characters you can build your teams with. I've been using Apple to beat story missions. He has a nice mass attack ultimate, which is basically an AoE attack, but he can also heal the team. Alien T is also someone I couldn't resist using. The cow that he flings around is just too funny, although I do feel bad for it sometimes. But the two characters that I've found to be using the most is Sweetheart and Baby Blue. Baby Blue's kit is almost entirely built around debuffing. She can even prevent enemies from taking turns, while one of the cards that belong to Sweetheart can deal a lot more damage if the enemy is debuffed, so they work together nicely. But in order to use these characters properly, you'll need to raise them. First, we have the usual level up system, where you feed the materials, and then there's Insight, which resets the character's level and increases the level cap. At second Insight, the character also unlocks a new costume, which is a nice way to feel like you've made progress with the character's growth. There's also Portray, it's like a constellation system, so getting dupes of the character powers them up. I actually pulled on the beginner banner and got two copies of Regulus, and she is super fun to use, so I was happy I could get more power out of her. Now, you can also equip Psycubes, which I'm not sure how to categorize them. I guess they're like weapons, except you can farm for them from stages. However, the coolest system to me, at least personally, is the Resonate system. It's like an extra way to power up your character by raising their Resonate level, but the trick here is that you have to put in the upgrades like Tetris pieces, and I gotta admit, I was pretty dumb trying to figure out how to fit them all, until I pressed the quick load button and it did it effortlessly. Needless to say, I need to work on my visual spatial skills. 
All in all, the game has a ton of cool stuff in it. I have beaten the first two story chapters and I'm starting on chapter 3. The plot is interesting and you even get to explore the time period you're on, like investigating rumors and battling special enemies, as well as getting immersed with the lore of the time warp periods. Now, as far as I'm aware when it comes to game modes, I currently have access to resource stages, where you just farm the mats for various things, then there's inside stages to raise the character's level cap, and then there's artificial somnabulism, I'm not sure if I said that one correctly, but here you go through challenging stages, earn stars, and redeem rewards weekly. But you might be wondering, does this game take a lot of time? Honestly, you'll probably spend a good chunk of time by just beating the story initially, which is totally normal and great for a free-to-play game. And then later, when you need to farm for the materials, you can just select a stage and do it on auto, which by the way has faster animation speed, and you can even select to redeem up to 4 times the rewards for just a single auto. So no, I don't think this game will demand too much time. For me, it's going to be a perfect side game when I'm playing Genshin, and I cannot wait when the game goes global. So yeah, I highly recommend for you to use my link in the description and make sure to follow the official social media channels because if you think this game looks cool, you will want to make sure to stay tuned for the news. Anyway, thanks for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it and as always, you can help me out by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Thanks again and see you next time.